Hello, I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon, back with my friends from policemag.com. Today we will be talking about part two of putting suspects in positions of disadvantage. When we handcuff, search, and or cover, we can use different positions. Unfortunately, I think sometimes we're using the same positions that we use to cover to handcuff or search. And in many times, it is no, dis it is no advantage to us. The one that we'll be discussing and analyzing today is the on top of your head position one handcuffing. This one really, to me, offers very little uh, advantages when you are handcuffing and or searching. It's a great position to cover. So if I'm covering somebody, put your hands on top of your head. Very, very good to cover. But when I want to pat them down or search them or handcuff them, um, obviously that's not the position I'm going to have them in. Let me bring in my partner to help me talk about this program. I'd like to introduce you to my friend and partner, Detective Rob Mago. Rob? First, uh, Rob, I'd like to thank you for having us here at the Manchester uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy in CrossFit Thin Blue Line here in Manchester, Connecticut. Rob, thanks for having us here. No problem, Rob has also uh, been on the job for eight, 16, 16 years, Rob? Uh, 14 on the job, 12 on SWAT. 14 on the, uh, on the job, and how many on SWAT? 12. 12. So Rob is not only a lifelong martial artist, but obviously a career law enforcement officer. And obviously, he's been with me for over 10 years. Rob, we're going to be talking about positions of, of tactical advantage for us, putting our suspects in a disadvantage. And we've talked about this a lot, the, the uh, hands on the head. Mm -hmm. Now, many entries, I've used those. Put your hands on top of your head, because you can put two or three guys next to each other, and one guy can cover them very efficiently. You agree? I agree. As long as you have time and distance to cover them, and you're not immediately within the path of their elbows, you're, you're okay. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, because what we're finding is that this seems to be very popular still in part, different parts of the country. Now guys, if it works for you, analyze why it's working for you. If it's working for you because no one has tested you on it, which means nobody has thrown something at you and you covered and immediately countered with something different, all right? If that's the case, that's fine, but many times we will do a technique or a, a search pattern. I've done it for 20 years. Well, that doesn't mean we do everything right for 20 years. It just means that's the way we've been doing it for 20 years. So it's up to us as trainers in our profession to take a look and constantly adapt and modify. This is the one we're going to be talking about. Rob, do me a favor. Would you turn around, put your hands on top of your head, interlace your fingers. This is the position we're talking about right now, which is, I believe is a good cover position, but it doesn't offer me any tactical advantage when I move next to Rob. All right, Rob, again, now grant that he's a lifelong martial artist, but we could bring in any, any individual with no training whatsoever, and they could still counter with these same moves. First, you see a lot of this, grabbing the fingers here, maybe putting the elbow, pulling Rob off balance to do a search pattern, all right? This offers you no tactical advantage whatsoever. From here, throw that off, Rob. He can throw an elbow off this way. Throw this one off, Rob. He can throw it off that way. Throw it down to my midsection, Rob. He can throw it down this way. Now, let's get a close-up shot here. Even with this, can you fire it off, Rob? Go. All right. Uh, let me try it again. I'm going to pull you off balance. Ready? Go. All right. So, guys, it's no matter what, this, first of all, is fine motor. This itself, the weight of his arms is mass. All right. Now, interlocking his fingers, it doesn't make a difference. I can't squeeze hard enough that he won't be able to respond out of that right away. He can fire off his elbow. This is his strongest upper body weapon. Now, angle it off, Rob, like you're hitting me here. Now, if he gets me with anything like that, that's pounds per square inch, which will maximize that shot. Now, we'll say that Rob decides to even try it later on. So now, say I'm pulling him back here, and now I'm gonna go down below here. Now look what's opening up. My occipital lobe, my spine, my neck, all with what levels of force are those? Those are deadly force shots. So if Rob, I'm not gonna do it, Rob, but we'll just say this is my head down here, fire. So here, Rob can even remain in his tactical position. I'm gonna hold real tight, fire. Here, and when we do this, and Olsen drops this right here, bang, occipital lobe, back of the neck, okay? There's just no advantage to that whatsoever. Again, like I agree with Rob, I'll cover you this way, all right, but besides that. Now I've seen this one here. Now guys, this is not, this is just to analyze it. Let's, let's put egos aside and start to take a look at what's working for us. 
Um, it's hard to do for us sometimes, especially if it's worked for us for so many years, or we think it's worked for us, because no one's really tested us out. I've seen this, grabbing here, pulling them back this way. Rob, which one would you fire first? That one. Now, angle it off like you do an elbow shot. Fire. He's got this. I'll even try it back. Fire it, Rob. Fast. So there's just no way. How about uh, here? Can you do it with this one? Okay, so here, if I now take only one weapon system, which would be my support hand, all right, and do anything in this way, he, he has the tactical advantage. Thanks, Rob. So, Rob, do you agree? I don't see any tactical advantage from doing that. There's too much rotational uh, force with my hips and my whole upper body, and then delivering it to the, to the weapon system of my elbow, it's, there's too much force to hold me there. And now you're also splitting up your cognitive process, right? I'm trying to hold and secure them this way and then start to feel this here. Remember, you can only really focus on one thing at a time. You can do this, but sometimes you're going to start to focus here on the search pattern itself. It's something I want you to take a look at and really analyze to make you think if it's beneficial or not. Now let's talk about one that we think is beneficial. Now Rob, as you know, with only one motion, would respond and take me out. Just one motion. We need to put our suspects in positions that they need at least two motions to counter us. Because if they can do it in one, we will not have time. Remember, action is faster than reaction. And the reason is, by the time we perceive it, cones, rods, and neurons comes into our brain. Obviously, we start to flinch when it comes to the midbrain, the occipital lobe, and then we respond. So it's action versus reaction. That's why it's always going to be faster. All right, let's try this one, Rob. All right, do me a favor. Turn around, face that wall. Take a wide platform stance. Wide. Put your hands behind your back, thumbs in the air. Shoulders back towards the sound of my voice. Now, right there, Rob, can you do anything from there without going erect first? Uh, I have to move something first. You'll have to, because right now the weight transfer is on Rob's heels. All right, so now this is here where I'll come in, click, and click. Okay? Here, if you can get a side angle, if you notice, any time we put Rob's shoulders behind his pelvic girdle. He needs to come up to match it and then try to counter from that. Because once I put uh, shoulders back towards the sound of my voice here, once we get here, all right, now Rob can, he needs two motions at least. One to balance, two to try to counter, okay? By that time, we are already because our hands in our position that we need. So if I'm talking to Rob, at the same time, that's when I pull this stuff up. I don't want to be excuse me, doing all that kind of stuff, I want to be covert. So as I'm talking to Rob, hey Rob, do me a favor, tell me the path you took to get here when you got to the school. That's when I start pulling my items out, all right? As he's talking, go ahead Rob, just uh, give us the, the direction you came here. There we go. Okay. Now I've seen variations of that, when he, uh, the officers have them put the, the hands behind your back clasping like that, like they're praying. There's a couple reasons for that. One, it's easy for the person to maybe understand how to put the hands behind your back. I've seen interlacing of fingers, but sometimes put your fingers together. They're doing it this way, they're doing it this way. There's a couple pros and cons. Rob, turn, Rob, please turn around, face that wall. Put your hands behind your back and clasp them together as you're praying. Now when Rob does that, when palms are configured inward like this, his body and his arms are closer to his spinal column, as the base of his back by his hips here. Just by that, now turn, now Rob, put your palms out, thumbs in the air. Just by that, you can see where he has much more flexibility. Put your palms together like you're praying, Rob. They're almost stuck to his body. Rob is very flexible, but if I'm putting handcuffs here, it's going to be difficult because I want to, I have to definitely pull him away from his back because his shoulder pivots this whole arm inward as soon as the arm turns inward. People can very easily put the hands and the palms out. Put the palms out, Rob. See how much more easier that is? But Rob's an athlete, too, so it's very easy. But the average guy, this is easy to do. Palms together, not so easy. And if they can do it, now it gets more fused. And fuse is not our friend unless we want to use fusion as part of our repertoire. But if he's using it, it's not an advantage to us. Turn around, Rob. In, in, uh, in wrapping this up, this is again just a strategy and tactic. Remember, the strategy is to safely put an individual into handcuffing for transportation. The tactics are what we are going to use to do so. Guys, whatever you're using, 
don't hesitate when you're working out with your partner, your officer, say, if I put you in this position, what can you do to counter? Well, I can do this, I can do that. All right, if I put you in this position, what can you do to counter? Well, I have to, and then just analyze that. This one we have found to be one of the better ones. Real quick, I've even seen this, hands together, back here. Still, one motion can be a countermeasure to them. So this strategy and tactic is the tactic we are using for the overall view is to put the suspect in a disadvantaged position that he needs to move two to three times more to get us than we need to respond. I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon. I want to thank again my friends from policemag.com. We'll see you next time on Strategies and Tactics. Until we see you then, for how you train, so shall you fight. Thank you very much.